Um, uh, the two previous lectures, we were talking about intrusion detection prevention system, and we left this topic of uh, high wall. Uh, as a particular, yani, uh, one uh, uh, specific lecture just for uh, firewalls because it's uh, it's very important. Uh, so what is a firewall? So a firewall, you know, uh, firewall. The, the name might look uh, yani, uh, very much used, etc. But the the principle of firewall is uh, very simple. Okay, uh, so it's a cho choke point of control and monitoring. So it's. Uh, in, in uh, a hub which uh, is used for controlling and monitoring the, uh, the traffic, basically the packets. Okay. Um, so it inter interconnects networks with different trusts. Most of the time, the firewall sits between uh, an external, insecure uh, network and an internal, private, secure uh, network. Okay. Most of the time, it's, uh, it, because uh, it needs to protect some network, network from an app. Okay. So, imposes restrictions on uh, network services, so only authorized traffic is allowed. So, uh, in the uh, firewall, we specify which service will be allowed, which service is not. Okay. Um, and it has auditing and controlling uh, access, so you can log who uh, did what and uh, which type of traffic went through. Uh, it might provide uh, NAN to the instrumentation and uh, monitoring. Um, we're going to see example where it is uh, it is used uh, as uh, uh, VPN uh, to implement the VPN basically uh, using IPsec uh, and of course must be immune to uh, penetration if uh, because if um, if um, the uh, the firewall uh, host or the device is compromised he and uh, the uh, all, uh, all that protection will be uh, uh, immune uh, to penetration means it can't be compromised. Yes, the, the, the uh, device itself or the uh, host. Okay, so yeah, so it uh, separates between uh, an internal um, protected network and external uh, unprotected network. Okay. So, uh, firewall limitations, we, we, saw, we saw it last time because a firewall, again, it's, um, it's a fence. Uh, around your network, so it protects uh, the uh, network from uh, external uh, intrusions. Okay. So it cannot protect uh, from attacks by passing it. So sneaker net. So some uh, look here. Um, if you have uh, a host inside the network, okay, and you need to um, to um, to protect uh, that host, okay, so you will. Set the uh, firewall rules, so because we're going to see it, uh, firewall is composed of rules, um, so that to protect that host. But if that host is providing a certain service, let's say it's a web server or a main server, okay, so you must allow, uh, let's say, port 80 traffic to go through, okay, because otherwise, uh, no, that that host will not be uh, uh, not be used, right? So you have a network. You have a network, and then you have a certain uh, web server there, okay? and then you have a firewall. Okay, some uh, firewall here, okay? Or this is not a firewall. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the firewall you might have descriptive uh, rules, etc. But if your web server is, uh, you have a web server here, and you need to have uh, that web server accessible from outside, you need to open port 80. You need to let HTTP uh, uh, traffic uh, go through. Okay, so this is an entry point. If an attacker wants to uh, to go inside, he, he knows that port 80 is open. He will take advantage of that. Okay, so this is the uh, the, uh, the trade off. If you protect, okay, but you have services to provide the outside world. You need to let that uh, that, uh, that traffic in. Okay. What about the traffic going outside? Does hmm? it uh, limit that also? No, if you. It limits, okay, yeah, okay, but but if you have your web server, you need to let the port 80 go through. You need to open port 80. Okay. So the point is, uh, okay, you're restrict, but you have some services to uh, to to, leave, to keep uh, available. Uh, cannot protect against internal threats. Uh, so um, insiders, something, any any users who is already in, any. Uh, he, he already in, so uh, uh, the firewall will not stop him from harming the, uh, the system. 
uh, so cannot access. So here, these two last points is about uh, uh, wireless. So basically, uh, when you use wireless uh, devices or uh, wireless uh, near uh, access, um, you don't have that much control over the traffic, right? Because uh, as long as the uh, device is within the range of the uh, of uh, of the router, uh, etc., so he will. Uh, Basically, you will rely on the, uh, uh, the security of the wireless protocol. Okay. Uh, so here it makes a difference with uh, with uh, with one. Uh, yeah. So when you have a firewall, you need a security policy. You need a firewall uh, policy, which is composed of what? Rules. rules. So a firewall is a set of rules. Okay. Now, who sets those rules? It's another story. Typically, uh, and, uh, the system administrator, the security administrator, the managers, the uh, everybody using the system will sit down and would uh, specify what kind of traffic is allowed in, uh, depending on the need of the users. Because some some users would say, okay, I need to uh, access a remote desktop from my house or to inside the network. So you need to uh, open a certain port to let this is uh, to make it possible. Okay. So. Um, uh, when a packet arrives at the firewall, security policies apply to determine the appropriate action. So you have a packet, uh, it goes through the firewall, and then it will be evaluated according to the set of rules. Okay. And uh, we have two decisions to take, either to accept or to deny. Okay. Most of the time. There are other types of uh, any action like reject or like uh, return or something, but these are the, uh, the most important. Um, so firewall policy, is an ordered list of rules. Each firewall rule consists of a set of tuples and an action. Okay, a rule. You know, I, I think you are you are uh, familiar with this. Uh, even in your personal firewall, if you open it, you see a set of, uh, of rules. If you try to, to check it, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, when you come. So each tuple corresponds to a field in the packet header. Okay, so basically. Uh, most of the firewalls will rely on information. In the packet headers, okay. In the packet headers, okay. Uh, there are five such fields for an internet packet. So most of the time, these these information uh, is the uh, we have five uh, header or packet header information we uh, will use to take a decision about uh, whether accepting or rejecting a uh, packet, which are protocol, which protocol you are using, the source address, IP address, the source port, okay. Uh, the destination IP address and the destination port. Five. Okay. So take decision out of, of uh, based on this. Uh, and we can use wildcard like star to mean, uh, let's say, if we put star in an IP or in one uh, uh, one digit of the IP, it means uh, one value from zero to two fifty five. Okay. Um, so this is an example of uh, firewall policy. Uh, firewall policies composed of set of rules. Okay. And uh, it uses a lot of your uh, wildcards, and here you have um, the uh, the protocol. So, for example, here this this rule means what? Any any, any, any communication from this from the network from it is so any packet any, any TCP packet coming from an IP that starts with, with 180 and going uh, from any port going to uh, any IP with uh, starting with port uh, with uh, with the digit 180, uh, go to port 90. You accept. It. You accept. It. Okay. So I have all the. Uh, and what is interesting here is that the last rule. Is it is it special the last rule? Denying. What 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 does it mean here the last rule? Uh, 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 anything is not uh, mentioned. Denying. So here basically the, uh, the checking of a packet. It starts from the. Uh, from the first rule, right? Yeah. So basically, and you go down. Okay. Uh, if you uh, reach the last one, basically by default, yes. if it doesn't fit any other rule, it will be denied, rejected. Okay. Is so this is called basically what? The last one. Yeah. The default. Default. Rule. Okay. So what's the difference between one and five? One so and five. Uh, it's almost like contacting. That's 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 a good question. That's a good. Uh, but first deny it, then accept it. Yeah. You have to accept everything except that uh, uh, that IP uh, uh, one one. 
Yeah, but but he's raising a good issue. Well, I'll come back to this. I'll come back to this. Okay. There is a, a couple of slides talking about this because there is here a novel right? Yeah. Yeah. So we will come back. To um, so rule matching. Here, what I what we explained here. If you start from the first rule, this is first match uh, policy. Okay. Basically, <coughs> you start from the first rule, and as soon as one rule is hit. You execute that action and you stop. You don't go through the remaining uh, the remaining rules. Okay. So this is called uh, a packet passed through a firewall. The header information is sequentially compared to the fields of the rule. If a packet header is information, so if there is a matching, uh, you apply the rule, uh, apply that, that action basically. If there is no uh, matching, you go to the next rule. Okay. Now this is considered first match policy. First match. As soon as you have a match, you stop. Okay. And you apply that rule and you stop. But it is not the only one. Okay. Um, yeah, he's talking about the, the default rule. So the default rule, or catch all, typically it's put at the end, and um, uh, actually reject. So typically it's reject because this is uh, one of the uh, security, uh, any, uh, requ not requirement, uh, best practices. Okay. If you don't know what to do with something, reject. Okay. By default, you reject. Uh, the, ad uh, the addition of the default rule makes a policy comprehensive. So comprehensive it means what? Comprehensive. Yeah. Covers everything. Yeah, so a packet will be matched by at least one rule. At least. Okay. So you can put your rules, but at the end, you have a catch-all. Any, any, any packet will be uh, matched by that one in, in the worst case. Um, what happens if the default rule is placed at the beginning of the policy? Yeah, it will touch everything. So all the rules, all the remaining rules will be useless. Okay. Policies that employ first match approach are done for the majority of firewall implementations. So first match approach is the most common, but it is not the only one. Okay. So there are there exist other match uh, uh, match policy. Um, uh, so the first one is the first match policy is most popular. Now here in the first match policy is the rules order important. Yes. Yeah. So the order you put your rules is important. Okay. It's different to uh, to reorder. Uh, it makes a difference if you reorder rules. Now there is best match policy. Best match policy here. Uh, you have a packet. As you said here, it can be matched by let's say two or three rules. You will pick the uh, best match. What does it mean here? Best match uh, according to uh, most uh, It is closer. Yeah. You see here, if you have uh, if you have uh, one. 90, then uh, 180, then star, then star. And then you have another rule, which is 190, 180, uh, then one, uh, 200, and then uh, 50. Okay. And then you have a packet, which is 190, uh, source IP, 190, 180, uh, 200, and then, uh, and then 50. Okay. So here, it is matched by both rules, right? But the best match here second. is a second. It is closed. Okay. So, uh, uh, so basically, here you you list uh, all the uh, rules that are matching uh, your 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 current packet, and you pick the best one. Okay. So this is best uh, best uh, match policy. Uh, look for the rule most closely uh, matches the packet. Is rules all important? No, no, no. Here it is not, because anyway, you will for every packet you will go through all the rules. You need to identify all the rules matching to that, uh, that point. Okay, uh, that, that, that part. Uh, so best match is the default criteria, for example, for IP routing. When you do IP routing, you have a packet you need to route, you need to pick the best uh, yeah, the appropriate, appropriate uh, yeah, the, uh, path to, uh, to, uh, to a packet. And, uh, so best match is, is the point. Uh, and then the third one is last match points, basically. Uh, last match, you have uh, a packet <laughs> matched by several rules. You would pick the last one. Okay. But here, here the uh, here uh, the idea is when uh, when a system administrator or security administrator is setting up the rules, uh, it, he might be adding the rules in sequential order. So the last rule is really the most uh, fresh, the most up to date. Uh, one. So this is why if it is matched by the first, then the second, then the third, you will take the last one because it's the most recent one, let's say. Okay. Um, so is rules order important here? Yes. 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 So here is rules order is important also. Okay. 
Um, no, the last match is has to be exact match or close? Uh, no, here just match, just match. What about uh, in, uh, in that no case uh, the the default should be the first. The, 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 the default? Yeah, you, you don't have. Default. In, in, in that case, uh, no. In that case, uh, the default will be the first one. You place the default as the first one. Okay, and you start normally if you want you need to optimize. You start from the uh, the bottom basically, the last one. Now um, there is what we call anomalies. Anomalies. So this is a situation where uh, you have. A packet matched by, let's say, two rules, and the basically if it is matched by two rules and the action is the same, is there a problem? No, no. There is no problem because the action would be anyway the same, accept, accept, or deny. Them. But when the, it is matched by two rules and the two actions are different, here we have a problem. This, this is, is called the, anomaly. This is the best match. Uh, uh, here, in all, uh, here, here we're talking about first match. Here we're talking first match, but with best match, no, it doesn't happen. Yeah, you don't have this problem in best match, right? No, first, uh, f first match, as soon uh, the, f the first one, uh, the first one because, because, because yeah, 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 okay, so, okay, so okay. yeah, 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 yani, the, the, the firewall will work, the firewall will work, <laughs> meaning. It will not hang or it, it will take a decision out of but is this the right decision? Oh, really yeah, yeah. So basically, here is an example. So here, uh, the, the first uh, anomaly type here is intended consequence of adding rules in a certain order. Okay. So it's an unintended uh, 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 consequence. So uh, one anomaly is called shadowing. Shadow. So shadow is what? Shadow. Well, yeah, well, something hides another. You are in the shadow of someone, so you are hidden by him. Okay. So here, shadowing occurs when an earlier rule matches every fact that another lower rule matches. With an example, be clear. Shadowing occurs when every tuple in RG is a proper subset of R. Uh, here, yeah, it's, uh, it's about uh, any the math representation. But let's let's talk about this example. So shadowing occurs between the following two rules. So you have. Uh, this uh, first rule, this, yeah, the first two lines is the rule. Okay. So here, TCP, then 190, 150, 140, 38. I think the source IP, there is no problem. Now the destination thing. So here, the source port is 188. Uh, then destination port is the same. The only difference is uh, destination uh, IP. This is not it. Okay. So here. And the first rule, 190, 180, 159 dot star, and this rule comes first. This rule comes first. Okay? And the other one, instead of star, here you have 180. Yes. And the functions are different. Okay? So we have accept here, we have dropping. So if you have a, a packet coming with uh, this exact IP, with this, with this uh, exact IP. Okay, so it's contained in the first one. So yes, yeah, so it is. It will be matched by the first one, and the action will be accept. Mm -hmm. Why? We have a specific rule just for that IP. It should be in a rejected here. So here, this is shadowing. This rule is hiding the negative. So this one will, will never reach this one. Will never reach this one. This one will match no, no, no part. Because this one will shadow. Okay. So. Here this is, this is, uh, 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 it's called shadowing, and here it's, uh, it's complete shadowing, basically. Uh, all of the packets are matched by this one, are already matched by this, so it's complete. All this rule is completely uh, yani shadowed or hidden by the first one. Okay. Um, now you have half shadowing. Half shadowing, it's basically part of the, <coughs> of the, of the packets matched by the second rule are matched by the first one. Only part. Okay. So only portion of the part of so the later rule matches an earlier rule. So for example here uh, you have here a protocol TCP the same. Source IP it is the same. Uh, source port uh, here we have star. And then uh, we have here destination IP same thing. Here we have star we have okay. So the first uh, see here we have star here and we have star in the uh, in the, uh, in the second rule. So, what happens if the receiving packet has 
the, 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 the source IEP. The source okay. IP is no problem. Yeah, the source IP is the same. But the source port 100. Second. So, so here, so the source port 100, it will be, it will not be matched by this one, the first one, and it will be matched by the second one. So there is a, a, a packet. Uh, that is matched by the second rule. It will, it will escape the first rule and it will be matched by the second rule. Now, if you have source port 188, yeah. now this one will be uh, matched by first the first one. Okay, it will, it will uh, and again here the and are, are different. Okay, so this is a specific, a specific example of the shadow, this is half shadow. Okay. But uh, the information is not complete, I mean, for the second one. Yeah, yeah I have the source IP, the, the source port, and yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's not complete, but just to uh, to specify the example, what's the problem exactly? It is shadowing also. It is shadowing because if we have uh, here uh, uh, in the destination IP, we provide that same exact address, uh, yeah, yeah, one one eighty here. Okay, it will be matched by the first one, right? While it is, it should be dropped. Basically. It will be accepted while it should be dropped because we have a specific rule for that. The same. What will happen in best match in that case? In what? In best match. Because you have two variables in this case. Mm. Yeah, so here, best match is, I will not talk a lot about the details, but best match uh, you need to represent your rule as a set. A set. Because here, if we specify here uh, uh, this rule, according to you, uh, how the, what is the number of packets matched by this rule? 25. Yeah. Yeah. All ports. All, ports. All, ports. All ports. So these are 2 to the power 16. Mm. So the space of this rule is 2 to the power 16. Right? Okay. Mm. Now, what is the uh, set of rules matched by this one? Mm. Or the set of packets that are matched by this one? Mm. So here we have the space, just we have a star in this, in this uh, we have a star in this digit. And the digit is 0, 2, 2, 4, so 256 possible power. So here, the space of possible packet is 256, and here, 65,000, or 64, something like that. So here, this one is more specific. You see? But, uh, so if it is matched by, you have a rule that is matched by both, you pick which? No. In the best match? No. Huh? No. So basically, which one? The first one. The first one. But, but uh, the problem is, uh, all the pops are uh, most likely not used, but all uh, our IPs no, no, are used. No, so no, no. <laughs> space. It's about yeah, the set theory. Yeah, the, the cardinality one. of the set, yeah, the number of elements of the set. Okay. The second one is specific for an IP, for destination IP, but the source port is 180. Yeah, yeah see, um, in that case, you need to define your. What do you mean by best match? You have a uh, you know, mathematical definition, and you choose. Uh, I mean, clearly set. Okay. So you can you can change that that, 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 that best match uh, yeah, policy. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you have uh, so basically this shadowing and this anomaly appear when you start adding rules, rules, and then you don't keep track of who add what, and you have uh, the rules becomes very large. You will most probably have these type of anomalies. So if you find them, you need to fix them. Can you make it automated? I mean, it's easy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, some software packages are available to help find the problems, and uh, only other experience can ultimately determine whether the rule ordering is correct. Because uh, if you have an anomaly, who, yani, who how to decide that uh, you need to reorder them? Oh, this is an anomaly. You need to understand the meaning. What do they mean? And you need to say, ah, in this situation, the best action to take is accept. Okay, and this you need the system administrator. Of the security administrator who set that those rules. It, it's it's not uh, so you, you need the uh, involvement of the uh, of uh, of human. Um, so best match policy do not have this issue. This reason is often used to promote the use. So again, with best match policy, we don't have anomalies. Okay, uh, uh, and this is why it is. Uh, some people would say it's better. Uh, however, best match rules are typically considered difficult for the administrators to, to, to manage. Yeah. Best match is very confusing. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, now, policy optimization. When, uh, of course, here uh, you have a packet, you have a packet, and it will go through uh, all the rules or most of the rules. Okay. If it 
to to take an action, you will go through a hundred rules. Then you take an action. Okay. So there is a time. There is processing time. You need to go through all one hundred rules, check, uh, compare each one, etc. And then after the one hundred one, you will find. It is uh, it is different from the case where you will have a match in the first three or four uh, rules. Okay. So here the ordering. The ordering of the rules is very important, okay? Because it's about optimization, okay? And uh, how, okay, if I tell you, I need an ordering which optimizes the uh, firewall work, okay, or firewall uh, yani, uh, efficiency, okay? How are you gonna order the rules? Smaller than the first. The most, the most restricting. So the most specific. Yeah, okay. this. That's true. No, uh, it's when first, so okay, it is most okay. Good. It is very specific, but but uh, that specific rule it it is it uh, it uh, it contains an IP which is not very popular. You have a small IP here which is not very so it will be uh, yeah, checked with every packet. Well, it is not popular. It is matched once in a while. Okay. So here you need to place uh, yeah, you all the rules according to what? Is it according to specific or general? No. no. According to according to denial or the most used. How popular they are? Okay, the frequency. So basically, and this can change over time. It can change. Okay. So basically, the uh, firewall uh, rule yeah, order, it you need to count. You need to watch first how many and you count how many rules is uh, hit. Okay. Then. You reorder them according to their popularity, okay? And then you keep updating them that all the time, okay? As soon as one pack becomes very popular, you bring it first. So to optimize the efficiency, so that the packet will, will take less time. Uh, why? Be, uh, why are you doing that? B because attacks are not coming. So if you are making uh, popular... We're talking about efficiency. Yes, it's just efficiency. Just efficiency. Because, because at the end of the day, if, if you have a, a firewall policy uh, with a set of rules, then you reorder them. Does the behavior of the firewall change? Does it change? Depends on the... Does it change? Yeah, I mean, when I say behavior, the output, I mean the decision taking for every part, does it change? No. It depends on the new output. It depends on the... If it's... Yeah. Yeah. Shadowing, we so here it's optimization. You assume that you fix it for the shadowing. There is no shadow. Okay. Okay. Now, if you reorder the packet for the sake of efficiency, the output of the firewall, of the decision taking for every packet, does it change? It should stay the same. This is called the integrity, basically. Uh, uh, yeah, keeping integrity. Okay. So if you reorder the rules. The integrity of the firewall should be the same, and it should be kept basically. If a packet in the before reorder, before optimization is accepted, after optimization, it should always it should stay accepted. Okay. If it is denied, it should also stay denied. Okay. So reordering is advantage, but it must be done so that the policy integrity is maintained. Okay. Uh, policy and typically, if you don't have uh, shadowing, if you don't have anomalies. It would be. It will not be maintained if there is an anomaly. In that case, if you optimize and reorder, you will have trouble. You will have. And another. A reordering, this is one way to optimize the uh, firewall efficiency. But another way is to combine rules. If you have rules which can be combined, Okay, uh, uh, merge it into one rule. It will also improve the efficiency. Okay, and now if any uh, 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 reordering can it be automated? Reorder can it be automated? Yes, it can be. So you have a counter, etc., and it automates. It, it will reorder the the the, the packets, uh, the, the rules automatically. But uh, for combining, is it uh, is it uh, automatic? Can it be automated? Please? Yes. Yes. It can. Yes. It can. Because it doesn't require the intervention of, uh, of the uh, of humans. Okay. What is combining? Combining, you have two, let's say here, what's the following two rules? You have protocol TCP, TCP, then you have uh, source IP, source IP, source port, source port, and then you have uh, 139 dot star destination IP, and here 180, which is destination IP, but, but the difference is 
the options are the same. You should do it, but with the same action. Yeah, so is there an anomaly here? No. There is no anomaly. So the action is the same, basically, you can group them together. So basically, what you need to do here? Remove the second one. And that's it. Okay, it will, it will do the job. Okay. So here, uh, yeah, if combine them, of course, you need to do it while when the actions are the same, of course. If the actions are different, you cannot combine. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's uh, yeah, let's see this for next time. Uh, if, uh, in the future, you you for some reason you drop the first row. Huh? How will you get the second row since you? If you drop, how many, what do you mean by drop? Uh, so you remove it. You, yeah, you remove the, the first row. But you want to keep the second. Plus, if you, if you, ah, I mean, uh, okay. So for some reason, then the first row you don't need it anymore. So basically, if you combine them, yeah. you will not. In that case, you need to uh, remove yeah. also that that other one and uh, uh, remove the combined one and replace it by uh, the old one. What if you forgot that you uh, combine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you keep a look. Typically, when you have a rule, uh, yeah, you can you can delete it. You can. <coughs> there are situations where you, you might need to delete it. In that case, I don't know. Uh, that if you can delete, you can replace also. Right? Thank you.